My name is David Zemak Burson. I'm the founder of Feldenkrais Access and like to personally welcome you today to the uh, introductory class for our new series, Discovering Core Ability and Agility. And our, our teacher is Dwight Pargee from the great state of Oregon. And I'm very honored to, to welcome Dwight uh, to our staff. And I'm especially excited for the, the unique perspective that I feel Dwight will bring to his teaching of the Feldenkrais Method. It's a perspective that's informed by um, an enormous amount of academic training in biomechanics and exercise physiology. And his, I think, unique and special insights into high level performance. But this is, these things are combined with his, what I find is Dwight's unique empathy and his compassion for those with pain and, and serious movement limitations. So um, I have my own blanket on the floor. So I look forward to joining you in today's session and following um, a very, very brilliant teacher's uh, instructions for us. So thank you very much. And thank you, Dwight, for, uh, for being with us. Thank you, David. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful to see everybody. People I know, people I don't know. Maybe I will know. So we'll, we'll start the movement lesson. So um, please come onto your backs. And make yourself comfortable, whatever that means for you at this moment. I was taught long ago when I worked in the theater to always start with paying respect to the space. So take a few moments to, to feel yourself in your own space. You can even open your eyes and look around the room and just observe. What do you see around your space from this perspective? And then there's this other, this other stranger space, this virtual space that it's just actually just amazing. And again, I, I have great gratitude for David and this whole staff for putting this together. It's an amazing amount of production that goes in to linking everybody worldwide live like this, and then to make these movement lessons available to so many people. And so I really hope that we all have a just a just a wonderful lesson uh, experience for yourself that you you actually will will feel better and more comfortable and that's that's kind of my intention is that when you you feel better at the end so that's kind of your guiding light so please take care of yourself what we're doing this is not an exercise program it's it's something that we're going to learn to to sense and feel ourselves at this deeper level. Make maybe make new connections with yourselves. And we're definitely going to be connecting through this series with each other too, the way it's set up. We'll have plenty of time for questions and answers and extra things we'll add in. So if it's comfortable for you, you can close your eyes during the lesson. We'll be doing things with your eyes open, eyes closed. But if, if you close your eyes, your, your kinesthetic, your felt sense is greatly enhanced. And Feel your contact with the floor. I happen to be in a little beach house in Northern California, in Santa Cruz this week. So I'm, I'm a, a block from the beach and can hear the seagulls, 
and hear the surf in the mornings. And of course, there's a nice sandy beach there. So you can imagine if you're if you're lying on a beach, firm sand, what would be your body print into that sand? Just like when you walk on sand, you leave a footprint. If we, if we had a way of just peeling you up out of the, the floor right now and you looked back on yourself, what would be your impression into the floor? What, where would you feel like the heaviest parts of the back surface of your body are? What's pressing into the floor the heaviest? And then there's places where maybe it's touching but not pressing as much, right? There's a contour. And then of course there's places of space that are lifted off the floor. Nobody's 100% on the floor. Maybe feel behind the back of your knees or behind the back of your heels. How much space do you feel underneath your lower back? You could take your hand if you wanted to and feel one side of the arch of your lower back or the other side, compare. We learn, and since this is a learning modality, we're doing these easy, gentle movements today to, to learn to improve our skills and our ability, our ability to move through space, to our activities we wanna do, that we learn by making these just sensory distinctions, simple sometimes. What about the rest of your back, the middle part of your back? where the ribs wrap around, underneath the back of your shoulders, your hands, your wrists, behind the back of your neck. And then you feel the weight of your back of your skull on the floor too. So now, very gently, lift your head as if you wanted to look down towards your feet. Like if you were laying on the beach and you heard a dog bark, or somebody shouted your name, and you wanted just to look around yourself. You could open your eyes. How easy is that for you? It might not be so easy for some people, so don't, don't strain, and don't do it 172 times. <laughs> But notice how easy this is. This is a primary human function to be able to lift our head and to orient to the world around us. Do you grunt or strain? <laughs> yeah. If, if you could interlace your fingers and bring your hands behind the back of your head, gently lift your head and see, does that help? When your head lifts up, what presses down? Okay. What presses down underneath you? What happens in your lower back? What happens in your pelvis? Now pause and, and bend your knees. Bend your knees so your feet are standing on the floor. Have your feet about maybe hip width, a little wider than hip width, somewhere comfortable. What happened with that space underneath your back when your legs are bent like this? And again, lift your head. You can interlace your fingers behind the back of your head now and lift your head and feel does, when you lift your head, what happens in your lower back? Does your lower back press into the floor more? Does it de-arch or do you keep it arched? Do you breathe somehow? Are you breathing? Maybe we can all agree breathing is important at some point. Go slowly, right? So you're moving in a way that's exploratory, right? Not trying to accomplish something, not trying to make something happen. We all have, we all have spent our lives using a willpower to get somewhere. Here we want to develop a higher we find skill, uh, how we do things. So we have to slow down to pay attention. All right, pause, just pause. 
And, and as we go along, you can take as many breaks as you want to. Again, you want to make this a pleasurable experience for yourself. So pause. If something feels really good, you can do more. But once you, for people who have never done movement lessons like this, there's a, after a time, you learn to kind of pace yourself, right? Today, pacing you in a certain way. And then you also will find a way to, to make the lesson your own in a way. But take one hand and put it right on your sternum, your breastbone, softly. softly. And now put your other hand on top of that hand. So your hands are crossed gently, your elbows are out to the side. Take a breath in. You might feel as you breathe in, your chest expand a little bit underneath your hands. Not a big powerful breath, but just feel that your lungs inflate. And as you breathe out, lift your head again and feel how your hands can guide your ribs, your sternum downwards towards your hips. A little bit, just a little bit. Don't press hard. It can be a real tender area for people, so don't use a lot of force. It's like your hands just give a little bit of feedback that says, oh yeah, my ribs can be soft. And you'll feel, what do you feel? What happens underneath against the floor? The sense of your ground forces, the ground forces as you lift your head, what presses in? Head goes up, what goes down into the ground? Do you feel your lower back de-arching here? All right, pause with that. Interlace your fingers again and bring your hands behind the back of your head. And lift your head a few more times as if you wanted to look between your legs. Again, your eyes can open and as if you really wanted to look down there. Is that a little easier? Can you feel those lower ribs traveling down towards your hips? Again, you don't have to do hundreds of repetitions here. It's the quality of your movements. As you pay attention, that's what creates these new connections in ourselves, these new linkages. It feeds our brain. Thinking it's like a vitamin, like a supplement, sensory motor information. Nutrition for our systems. Now, I can already see people have, look at all the varieties of ways of doing this. Okay, so we'll, we'll play with a couple variations here. So some people have their hands interlaced with their elbows wide and then lift their head. So try that. Have your elbows really wide and lift your head with your arms and feel which part of your abdominal wall do you use? Where, if you did hundreds of repetitions this way, what would start to fatigue or get sore? Maybe already you might be feeling something. So again, don't strain, but just feel where the work is happening. And then pause. Now bring your elbows towards each other. Bring your toes so they come close to your face, sides of your face. And then now lift your head. You, you can even think about the, your head being heavy in your hands and lift your head again with it. And you wanna feel that your eyes are looking down towards your knees, right? So the orientation of your face changes as you lift. And does that feel like, is it a deeper flex? Is it a deeper rounding that starts to happen through your whole spine? As we start to move, through the center of ourselves. Okay, and then take a full rest. Let your, again, let your legs go long, your arms go long, if that's comfortable. Give it up. Roll your head a little bit left and right, just easily. Release any extra work in your neck or your jaw. And 
And just, just feel, did something change with your imprint into the sand already? Maybe, maybe not. It's this shifting of your attention to, again, to make these sensory motor distinctions. That's what creates change. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to make it happen. Bend your legs again. Interlace your fingers. Bring your hands behind the back of your head. Bring your elbows off the floor. And as you start to lift your head again, begin to bring your right knee towards your right elbow and your right elbow a little bit towards your right knee. Your, your right knee and the right elbow, right elbow and right knee, same side. If you have a difficulty with moving your right leg for some reason, you can, you can change over my directions. But otherwise, let's start with the right. Otherwise, we're going to get confused here. So bring your right elbow and right knee. And that doesn't mean to try to touch them, right? So they just come a little closer together and then lower back down. Almost nonchalantly. But feel what happens on the right side of your lower back. Can you feel that presses into the floor a little bit more? Even along the ribs in the middle back. Can you time your breathing in a way that makes it a little easier? If you were to hold your breath, does that make it easier or harder? Sometimes we're so used to working hard through exercise. That every, every movement, we just hold our breath and grunt. Now, pause again. Close your left eye. So keep your right eye open. And as you take your right knee and right elbow a little closer together and back, look at your right knee with your right eye. Kind of a funny thing. But feel what that does. And I, you, you'll notice as we go along through these weeks of lessons here in this series, I ask a lot of questions. And you don't have to have answers to everything. <laughs> Just the shifting of your attention to these following. And, and I don't know is a perfectly okay answer. Sometimes it takes a while to feel these things. But notice what happens if you look just through your right eye. Keep your left eye closed as you do this. All right, pause again. Next time your head's down, keep your fingers interlaced behind the back of your head. We'll do one more variation here. And bring your elbows off the floor. And bring your right knee and your right elbow. Lift your head and right elbow and right knee together. and then. As you lower back down, bring your foot and your head to the floor at exactly the same time, all right? So the emphasis is going to be on the lowering back down. So you bring them a little closer together, but then feel if you can touch the foot and the hand and the head exactly at the same time, and then you bring the elbow and knee together again, all right? You just have reversed it here where your attention is. You lift your head, you lift your right knee towards your right elbow, and then you lower back down. You lower your right foot back to the floor. It's a light touch. It's an eccentric contraction, actually. Good, let it all go. Take a rest again. This idea of, you know, it's often that we go into a move and we do a deep contraction or a flex, and then we just fall, <laughs> fall back. Here you're starting to develop, it's a skill, right, to have, we, in, in, in the Feldenkrais method, we talk about reversibility as a, as a, as a quality of movement where you can learn so that there's an evenness, there's smoothness. And the smoothness is, is a state of the quality of the coordination. 
right? When we have jumpy connections, it's, it's like our brain is trying to find the, the right pathway. And then the smoothness of it eventually comes, right? It kind of it kind of happens with your explorations here. The smoothness is a higher state of the quality of the coordination. Now notice if there's a difference between your two sides now. We did all that folding and unfolding on the right side. The left side, whether you knew it or not, was actually doing some work also, being creating a little stability. But just feel, feel one side was a little bit more active, the other side was creating stability and just if there's a difference between your two sides roll your head a little bit again you could even open your eyes and see if there's a difference with how you orient turn to the right compared to the left the funny thing how how, how might that happen we were doing these things of folding and working in our abdominal wall and then how did that affect your ability to your head and your eyes? All right, bend your legs again. Now change over the interlacing of your fingers to the call the, the non-habitual way. So that means if you interlace your fingers, you, you'll feel one thumb is on top. So if you change over all your fingers, one finger hole, your other thumb will be on top. It'll feel a little strange. You might not have known that you have a non-habitual way. Bring that behind the back of our head. Our brains love non-habitual habits. Like it's, a, it's like a puzzle to solve. We're great puzzle solvers as humans. Bring your elbows off the floor and start to lift your head. And now bring your left knee towards your left elbow and your left elbow towards your left knee. Easily. And notice the quality of this folding on this side. Is it easier? Most of us have one side we flex a little easier on, and you'll find out as we go along, we have another side that we extend a little bit easier. It's an interesting, and we and the, and the point is not to try to be symmetrical. Humans are not symmetrical. We're not trying to make everything the same, but we can surely improve the what we call functional symmetry, the way we organize ourselves, right? The way we coordinate our actions. But we have to slow down to feel these things. We get so used to our habits that until we slow down and start to explore. We don't, we just, we just do what we know, right? We, we are all creatures of habit, which is necessary for life. But then we also have this wonderful way of improving, improving what we do. Close your right eye and start to take your elbow and knee, your left elbow and left knee together. So you're looking with your left eye towards your left knee as your elbow comes towards it, your left elbow and left knee. And next time you fold the, lift your head and bring the left elbow and left knee a little closer together, a little bit. Again, don't try to touch, don't strain. Have a smile on your face. As you lower down, bring the emphasis to the, the touching of the left foot and the lowering your head and see if you can land them exactly the same time. Like two airplanes doing a touch and go landing. Or they just lightly touch and then you reverse it and bring the elbow again. So you can feel what needs to happen with your breath to make it smooth. Take a rest, let your legs go long, your arms go long. Again, 
And just notice, was that a good time to take a rest for you? Or did you need a rest earlier? Or maybe you felt something very enjoyable and you wanted to keep going, which is fine. And you're going, can I please take what I'm saying as proposals, not commands. You're your own teacher here. Roll your head a little bit left and right again. Interlace your fingers, bring your hands behind the back of your head. Bring your elbows off the floor. Keep your, if possible, to start, keep your legs long, right? So keep your legs long now and bring your elbows off the floor. Lift your head as if you wanted to look down at your feet. Notice, does that happen a little easier? Do you feel, are your ribs a little softer? You get a little bit more rounding in your middle back. And next time you lift your head, Go ahead and bend both legs and bring both elbows and both knees together. Both elbows and both knees. All right, so both feet come off the floor. If that's too difficult to do, then you know, start with your legs bent. But if you can, as you ready, you want to coordinate the lifting of the head and then with long legs, and then slot, you have to find a way to, to deal with the weight of your legs, right? Elbows and knees come closer together and then back. And next time your elbows and knees come closer together, pause there, just pause for a moment. And imagine you had two sticks between your elbows and knees, like chopsticks, maybe the broomsticks or toothpicks, but keep it there. Keep the elbows and knees together, close, right, in relation, and then just rock yourself a little, an inch or two to the right, to the right and to the left, right? So you're, you're moving over your midline of your spine, just an inch or two together, right? So the elbows and knees move together. <laughs> Don't drop your sticks. <laughs> And do you have a smile as you do this or a grimace? <laughs> That's your indicator of good function. So yeah, you take a little break. Now, a good, if some people can't do this, right? So you could take your hands and hold onto your knees right, and do the same thing. But the idea with the, sometimes you call this the sushi roll. <laughs> Elbows and knees with the imaginary sticks. It's just an inch or two, right? But you'll feel the, the three dimensionality of what we maybe commonly recur as the core muscles here. It's your whole actual Japanese, we say in tanden. Deep, deep, deep. These deep postural muscles. All right, let it all go. Again, let it go. Unfold yourself. This is a lesson that we. It's 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 paradoxical, right? It's interesting. We we do all these variations on folding, and then the unfolding that happens. You actually get longer and freer by folding, right? You got you actually improve your skill at folding and unfolding. What's different with your breathing now? Do you feel like you have any more space or room inside of your lungs and inside of your ribs? Does your the location of your breath, right? And asking these questions gets not, not trying to, to do something, just observe. Just the act of observation changes the pattern. You're shining the spotlight of your attention into different places. That's where the magic happens. You can feel your breath in their sides, maybe, in the ribs, behind you. 
Are your shoulders lying any differently? What happened with that arch of your lower back? Okay, bend your legs, bring your feet to standing. Again, maybe just a little bit wider than your hip joints. Maybe you think about your a line from your armpits to your feet, about armpit width in a way. And now roll your pelvis so your lower back flattens, right? D arches. Roll your pelvis towards your head. Just a little bit. A little bit, and then you kind of come back. You can feel, do you use your feet, right? There's the, and there's different ways, and we'll, in the coming weeks, we'll go through all these different variations and maybe some even the reasons for these variations. But right now, just roll your pelvis and notice, do you use your feet or not? You can try it both ways, but there's a way of rolling your feet, your pelvis. If you push a little bit into your feet, your lower back presses into the floor a little bit. You feel all the way up through your spine, the length of through those 24 vertebrae to your skull. What does your chin do? Can you feel your chin come a little bit away from your throat? Are you clenching your jaw? You have a little space between your upper and lower jaw. Hmm. Now roll your pelvis a little bit in the same direction. So you push and go ahead now push actively push with your feet. So you push and you want to almost feel like your spine getting a little longer through the top of your head. And then you pause and then let it go so that you kind of spring back into place. You feel a little like the elasticity of the movement, right? So there's a little push, your lower back flattens into the floor. Don't grunt, a little bit, and then you pause with the push, and but you just let it go and you kind of bounce. It's springtime here in Santa Cruz. I'm happy to see up in Oregon, we've had a long winter. It's still snowing. So it came down here for spring break. So we have some springiness, a little spring, boing, and so let us just go. A little push and let go. And then pause there. And roll your pelvis. So again, your lower back just starts to press into the floor, towards the floor a little bit, and start to lift your pelvis into the air now. And roll up the chain of your spine. And if this feels difficult, you know, one option would be just take your hands underneath your pelvis or on your sides of your pelvis. Hold your pelvis a little bit. You can assist with your hands to lift your pelvis. It doesn't have to go high, right? Maybe it's just enough to bring us a piece of paper underneath your pelvis. And then you come back down. And then you lift your pelvis a little bit more. And you start to explore this lifting of your pelvis up. You can use your hands or not to help. So your feet, your feet are staying on the floor and you're lifting your pelvis up. Your pelvis is a group of bones down there. That's like a, it's like a big bowl, right? So it's a basin. You start to lift the basin of your pelvis up. And the idea is that you can move your spine vertebrae by vertebrae. It's like a, like a bicycle chain, right? Link by link. And then you can lower, again, just like when you were lowering your foot before, putting a little bit of the emphasis on the lowering, you can lower back down vertebrae by vertebrae. So you can use the floor, the ground contact again, as some feedback. And you'll find, everybody will find, there's certain vertebrae that don't want to move like a link. Those links are a little like a chunk, two or three vertebrae stunk there. That's okay, right? So take your time, slowly come back down, lift again.
What does your neck do? What does your chin do? Right? Can you feel as you lift your pelvis, if you allow your chin to come a little bit closer to your throat, your neck lengthens here. And your, your whole spine will lengthen as you lift. If you shorten your neck, that it will shorten your whole spine, actually. It actually makes it, makes it more effortable, more effort in the movement. Okay, pause again. Just even, just pause with your legs bent if possible. If not, take a full rest. And interlace your fingers again, one way or the other. Bring your hands behind the back of your head. Bring your elbows off the floor and start to lift your head again. So your elbows, you start to look down towards your knees. And next time you lift your head, keep your head up there. And now lift your pelvis. So you lift your pelvis and the back of your head will come towards the floor. And then you lower your pelvis and your head comes up a little bit. So if you can, you keep your pelvis and your head up from neither one will touch. It'll get closer and then away. It's like a, like a teeter-totter, a seesaw. Your pelvis goes up and your head goes back a little bit. And then your pelvis lowers down a little bit and your head goes up. And you'll feel you start to roll over which part of your back, which part of your back, which, which of those vertebrae, somewhere in your middle back. Right? And it's different for everybody. Some people are up more towards their shoulders. Some people more in the middle thoracic spine. And again, an option would be don't hold them both, right? You could, you could put the head on the floor and lift the pelvis up and then lower the pelvis, keep the head. But then there's this other way of keeping them both up and then doing this seesaw movement. And we won't even talk about breathing. <laughs> Except please breathe at some point. Okay, slowly. He's, uh, again, you'll find we're kind of going from simple to a little bit more complex with these movements. And you don't have to do a lot to get a lot of benefit here. All right. And give it all up. Let your legs go long. Notice the length in your spine there. This is a full complex movement lesson. There's a lot packed into these lessons. You can do them over and over again and still get benefit. And it's interesting, sometimes in these lessons, and I've been doing these for 30 some years, I still get benefit even from the ones I've did a long ago. You, know, you, you keep learning. It's a lifelong learning. And sometimes it's just you find a find a, a little sequence within a lesson that it's like, wow, that really did something. And this is this often is one of these, this lesson, this one you just did of lifting the pelvis, lifting the head, doing the seesaw movement. It's a it's a wonderful way of just releasing your whole spine to get that sense of length and openness through the deepest part of our center, right? We talk about being centered. It's common in our culture. You need to be more centered and grounded and all these. They're, they're, yes, these are important ideas, but what does it actually mean to have a felt sense of that? So you're learning about your center here from the inside out, specifically with this idea of activating in a way the, the lower abdominal wall freeing your hip joints, having a long spine. These are these qualities that will improve. It improves anything you do, right? It improves, it's good for humans. Good for all of us. Now roll over onto your front side. And some people have difficulty being, and we won't spend a whole lot of time, but some people have difficulty being on the front. So an option, and I think 
junior club will want to highlight some people. Um, the, you can bring a pillow or support underneath your chest if it's difficult to be on your front. Be on your front with your legs a little bit open and have your forehead resting on your hands. So put one hand, palm on the floor, the other hand on top and have your forehead resting if possible. Feel your weight coming into the floor. You're at the beach, you're at, you're, you gotta, you gotta turn yourself over so you don't just get the sun on one surface, <laughs> slowly turning. So now, now the front surface, your ventral front side of yourself is against the floor. Feel the weight coming down. And begin to open your eyes and start to look out at the wall in front of you. See what you can do. Yeah, if you keep your if you keep your hands and arms on the floor, just lift your head and look at the start to lift your head and look out towards the wall. If you're on the beach, you'd be looking out to sea on the horizon. It's like, what are the where are the sailing ships today? Where are the sailboats? Where are the spinnakers at? Or not, right? Is it the field? Oh, that that might actually might feel kind of difficult. So don't strain. <laughs> Take your time. Again, you have a. If you have a grimace on your face, maybe you have, if you're working too hard, slowly looking out the horizon. And imagine there's a little friendly bug or a gecko slowly crawling up the wall, right? So look and see how far up the wall can you track that bug with your eyes, right? So, and then slowly lower back down. So you don't want to just look up and then drop down, but slowly, it's like your visual tracking has so much to do with the use of what we call your extensor muscles. These are the muscles on your back that we use for uprightness, our anti-gravity muscles. And when you lift your head and you feel that your lower belly, your lower abdomen, way below your navel, presses into the floor a little bit. You can, you can actively press your lower belly into the floor and feel, does that help you lift your head? If you're tensing your belly and holding, that's going to actually inhibit this. But if you push gently into the floor, you'll slowly start to feel maybe your head and neck lift a little easier. All right, pause. Let your forehead on your hands again. Now this is this is kind of interesting. Again, to now most of us have a dominant eye, right? So if you were going to look through a, a telescope at something, which eye would you look through? So open your dominant eye and close your other one. And if you don't know your dominant eye or can't figure it out, just close one. <laughs> but you feel, close one eye, open the other eye and start to get track the gecko going up the wall with one eye smoothly and feel which side of your back works a little bit more. Can you feel? And don't strain, right? When we strain and put a lot of effort into something, that interrupts this communication in our nervous system, right? It's, it's just noise on our challenge. So just go, don't try to go to your maximum. We don't need to go to your maximum range of motion to get an improvement in the quality of the action. And pause again with your forehead lying on your hands and switch your eyes. So now close your dominant eye, open the other eye and slowly look up the wall and then come back down. And you might feel again that your eye wants to jump. Skip over, right? That's very common. Even the professional athletes I work with, everybody has these the skips and jumps in their visual field. And when it's interesting, when it touches the relation of our visual system to our postural system for action, that when we improve the visual tracking, the whole spinal quality greatly improves. There's a harmony that happens. So take your time, smooth out the jumpy spots, breathe, 
smile, don't strain. You don't have to achieve anything here. You start where you're at, right? Start with whatever you can do and you'll find you'll improve. Pause again, let your forehead just rest on your hands. And now let your eyes be heavy, right? So in this, this orientation with your face facing the floor here with your hand on your forehead, let your eyes kind of drop forward in their eye sockets. And then gently just roll your head a little bit left and right. So again, have a little bit of space between your upper jaw and lower jaw. You might feel some extra work or strain that in your neck from doing that. Let your eyes be heavy and then slowly just roll your head a little bit on your hands. Go any extra tension. A funny thing to let your eyes be heavy. It's so nicely relaxing. It creates a change in our autonomic nervous system here. More into the, say the parasympathetic or the relaxation state, which is the optimum state for learning, right? And then pause again, open both eyes, and just a couple times look out at the wall, look up at the gecko or the bug or towards the ceiling, feel what changed. As you lift your head, do you feel that, that pushing forward of your lower abdomen, the tanden area, pushing forward? Does that, is that any clearer? Okay, and then come onto your back and take a full rest. And notice again, is that a good time for you to rest? Did you need to get off your front? And again, if you don't push yourself. So if you need more rest, you could uh, you can roll to your side at a point or come onto your back and then come back to it. The wonderful thing about, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages of this format of on Zoom, but this is all recorded and you can go back and Fill in the, the places you missed too. So you don't have to do it all to get benefit. You've already done a lot. Notice the changes. Bend both of your legs and bring your knees towards your chest. Hold on to your right knee with your right hand and your left knee with your left hand. Bring your knees together. Just bring your knees together. And gently take both knees and make a little circle, just a little circle, a little round circle. Is it round? Is it smooth? You'll find as you take your knees in a little circle, just a little bit, kind of pull them towards your chest. But again, you'll find, again, your lower back, there's a circular pressure pattern into the floor here. A nice thing to do after what we just did with lengthening the extensor muscles. Change the direction of the circle. And let it go, take a rest. Unfold again, feel your unfolding. Maybe that should be the new lesson series. Feel your unfolding. Bend your legs and roll over onto your front side. And this time, prop yourself on your forearms and your knees. Forearms and your knees. So you're going to actually, actually, let, let's, let's not yet. Let's, let's do something else. So come, come onto your front and bring your forehead to the floor and have your hands a little bit above your head. Okay, so bring your forehead on your hands. Bring your forehead on the floor and your hands a little bit 
your arms are a little longer above your head, some, somewhere. Right. That's it. So you're gonna, you feel your forehead's on the floor and now slide your forehead so your chin comes towards your throat as if you wanted to look down at your belly button or between your legs without grunting. <laughs> It's a, it's a it's a strange proposal, right? So you're gonna your your forehead stays on the floor and you slide it and your chin comes a little closer to your throat. At some point you'll feel maybe, and this depends on how much flex you have in your thoracic spine, you you'll feel your head comes off the floor a little bit, right? And then you slide it back. It's not a big movement, it doesn't cast a big shadow, as we say. A little bit, right? So you start on the forehead and then you slide your forehead so your chin comes closer to your throat. You'll feel your neck round. You feel what happens between your shoulder blades. And then of course you come back, right? So don't hold it. It's a it's a pretty unique novel use of your abdominal wall here. <laughs> Don't strain, don't push with your arms. Feel where the action happens, right? Between the shoulder blades, it's the unknown territory for most of us. Babies have to figure this out. You all did this at, more or less at one point in your life, but of course we can go back and fill in the blank spots. All right, pause there. So now prop yourself up onto your elbows and forearms. So now your head, lift your head off the floor. Okay, that's easy. Yeah, everyone, most people are with me now. Okay, so think about maybe your elbows. If you dropped a plumb line from your shoulders right down to your elbows, right? So you can support, you're using your arms to support your hands. Or on the floor and have your head just hang, hang forward. And then do the same thing, kind of a similar thing where you bring your, your chin, you round your back a little bit and you'll feel like your lower abdomen actually pull away from the floor a little bit. It's actually, you can pull your navel in a little bit, even the below the lower, lower belly muscles are below, they're between your navel and your, your pubic bone down there. I feel there's a little bit, and then you let it go. You let your head just hang. There, and then pause, you can keep your head hanging, and now open your eyes again and start to look up the wall and feel now it's the reverse with your lower abdomen. You push your lower belly forward and feel you start to track your happy bug or your gecko or whatever. You wanna go travel up the wall, looking up at the ceiling, pushing down into the floor. And then, then you come back and then you can look underneath yourself a little. Feel the whole range here. These movement lessons are, so interestingly designed in a way that we use different positions almost as a constraint. And the constraint allows you to learn something new, right? But you don't want to you don't want to fight with a constraint. You want to be neurologically diplomatic with yourself and compassionate and kind. Be kind to yourself. All right. Now. Now, now bend your legs and, and come onto your knees and your elbows and forearms here, right? And there are people in the room who are doing modifications that Juniper will highlight if this is difficult for people. But if you can, you're going to be on your knees and on your elbows and forearms, have your head just hanging. And think about your knees again, think about a plumb line from your hip joints just falling through the bones, through your knee into the floor. Is, is, so you don't want your knees too narrow, no too wide. Somewhere comfortable, your 
your your feet, your toes can be long. Let your head just hang. And let now, because your belly's off the floor, you can let your belly hang forward, right? So they feel like the gravity of the earth. The earth is much larger than you are. So it's pulling you down into it. Allow your belly to hang. And then again, pull your navel, pull the lower tongue and the lower abdomen in. Pull it in and, and feel how that starts to flex your whole back. Again, if you want to open your eyes or think about using your eyes, be like as if you wanted to look between your legs. You can feel the area between your shoulder blades and then back a few times, right? And then, so you don't just keep doing it. You, you come to a rest. And then you do this flexing, this rounding movement by retracting your navel towards, you're actually bringing your navel towards the front of your spine. And your sp whole spine is rounding. It's like your tailbone, right? Your coccyx. If you had a big bushy tail, you'd be tucking your tail. You feel your pelvis rolls underneath you. Sometimes it, it helps to imagine you can have any kind of tail you want. You can have a kangaroo tail, you can have a horse tail, a unicorn tail, an elephant, whatever tail you like. Have a tail, tucking your tail. And now reverse it. So push the, your belly forward, lift your head, look up the wall, lift your tail. You start to feel this relationship between the rounding movement and the tucking your tail and bringing your head, your chin gets closer towards your chest. And then you push your belly forward, look up the wall and your tail lifts. Rounding. Good. All right. And then come all the way onto your back and take a full rest. Notice your contact with the floor now. Your imprint on the beach. Or whatever works for you. Your sense of comfort. Your breathing. What, what's, what grabs your curiosity, your attention? These lessons have a way of really Focusing our attention like that, we're shining that spotlight to different places, and it's it's a it's a neurological workout in a way. We try to reduce the muscular effort, but just the brain. It's like doing solving again, solving three D movement puzzles. It can be. It's a lot. Right? You might feel you might feel like that's enough for yourself. If you want to do a little bit more, it's all, and, and it, you know, it's not required. It's okay. You don't have to, you're not graded on this. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can come back. You can play with parts of this yourself. You know, again, that's part of making the lesson for yourself. And remember what we talked about at the beginning, that the end point, you want to feel better. <laughs> so you, if enough is enough right now, that's fine. If you want to do one more thing, Roll onto your hands and knees now. And again, there's going to be some modifications available for you to see if that's difficult for you. But we won't spend a lot of time here. Hands and knees. And just to set yourself up in the easiest way, again, think about a plumb line from your right shoulder down to your hand your right hand, and then another one from your left shoulder down through your arm to your left hand, and your right hip to your right knee, and then from your left hip to your left knee. And if it's difficult being on your hands, be on your fists, make little fists. 
but you want the if possible want the arms straight so you're bearing weight right through the bones here our bones are strong they'll support you and when we get the sense of skeletal consciousness then our muscular system doesn't have to work as much right let your head hang let your belly hang forward here again kind of set it up same idea it's been the same idea the whole time here here you are on your hands and knees. And then again, pull your navel in towards your spine, round your back, have your head look underneath, tuck your tail, your bushy tail, whatever your tail. And then look out at the horizon and up the wall, push your lower abdomen forward, rounding forward, easy and light. What happens? You can use your attention, your spotlight to feel up and down those 24 vertebrae. Which ones do you want the magic wand to touch to have a little bit more smoothness and ease? And then come onto your back and take a full rest. Open your eyes, slowly roll your head a little left and right and scan the room, kind of notice how you can take in the room now. Is that any easier going one way or the other? To feel lighter or smoother? Lift your head and look around the room. Is that any easier? Bend your legs, take your time to roll to your side and come up to standing. And this is a very important part of these movement lessons is as we've done all these, a lot of these movements in more of a horizontal relationship to gravity, now we come more vertical. And of course, if you need more time on the ground, you might feel like just taking a nap now, which is fine. So don't come up, do this later. But if you can come up, take a few times, if you're on a spongy, surface you can come off your mat so you're on the firmest surface possible and just appreciate your uprightness now what do you notice look around look over one shoulder Look over the other shoulder. Can you feel the connection between your eyes, your head, your long free spine now? Your weight shifting? And then pause. Have your, have your feet about, we get maybe a little wider than your hips and start to bring your chin towards your chest and then round down your spine. So start to fold, bring your head towards the floor. So you bend, round down, you can bend your hips, you can bend your knees. You don't have to touch your hands to the floor, but slowly use this idea of rounding, drop your, drop your pelvis down, bend your knees. If you, if this feels unstable, put your hands on a chair and come back and then, but think about your head, the weight of your head going towards the floor and then reverse it. 
right? So then you start to unbend your knees, unbend your hips, and then roll up the spine. Only go with what's comfortable. One of my long-term clients had a double knee replacement recently, and she loves to, she's a hunter and a fisher and loves to camp. And we were doing some lessons like this when I was working with her and she came back from a hunting trip and she just said, it's so nice to be able to squat in the woods and not feel like I'm going to roll down the hill. <laughs> right? Again, it's one of these basic human functions to be able to, to do that, that in some parts of our culture, we just eliminated, right? Yeah. Only deal with what's comfortable. But notice again, notice the, the, the ease or the quality. Right? Don't try to force something to make it happen. Now, another thing that's interesting that, I mean, there's all these different things. We're going to keep adding to this lesson. We're going to do some mini lessons for you to, for your further study that we'll add on to the program here, um, like applications of this, like we're doing now. So another one that you can do easily is imagine you had like a, a light wood chopping ax in your hands, right? And bend your knees a little bit. Slowly start to raise your axe above your head. And then chop the wood right in front of you. Right? And it's a little bit, right? So you want to you have your knees bent, right? So it's a little bit of a choppy movement. And what really helps is if you make a sound. Right? Huh, right? Little huh. It's a little huh. And, and feel there's a little tensing of your abdominal wall, right? As you strike that piece of wood, huh? Oh, make my loud sound if you want to. Oh, depends on who's in your room around you. <laughs> if it feels comfortable, you can do it a little faster, right? You make it a little swinging movement. Pop. And notice when you go up, can you look up at the ceiling a little bit? And then feel where your wood was, right? You gotta, you gotta orient to your, your block of wood that you're gonna chop right in front of you. But, um, okay, plenty of things to play with. Thank you so much for joining. It was a pleasure. Each week we're gonna, we do something different, right? This idea of, activating the center of us, locating the center of us first, and then finding ways to put it into function. Thank you so much for joining. If you please write in with questions, we're going to actually even film some question and answer sessions as we go along too. So I want this to be kind of an ongoing tour course and exploration, but hopefully this um, was useful for you and uh, have a great day and may the May the ground forces go through you. Thank you.